the right for you to keep and bear a firearm is an individual right, and that by your exercise of that individual right, you make others safe. This is one of the reasons I love living in this state. Even though this state has the reputation for being politically progressive, it also has the reputation for being one of the best gun rights states in the country. And the beauty of Washington is that those two things go hand in hand. This bill will impair your right to keep and bear arms. Just over the summer, someone who was recently released from prison, jail, failing to report to probation on drugs, stopping in front of my house, thinking they were being followed by somebody and firing three shots, one hitting my neighbor's house. That happened while we were asleep. My children were in bed. This was not a circumstance of a law-abiding gun owner with a concealed pistol license who went through all the background checks who did this. And in this legislation, and we had an amendment that would have maybe put some teeth into government to be more responsible about who's possessing guns and who's not. But we have seen such a rise in crime. And this legislation continues to create greater barriers for individuals to possess firearms to defend themselves, their families, and their homes. This bill is creating an additional barrier that's unconstitutional, uh, requiring classes to be able to exercise your lawful and constitutional right to bear arms. Madam Speaker, criminals don't take a class to, to carry a weapon. They don't, they don't take a class uh, before transferring a firearm. They don't take a class before purchasing ones. But they're the ones committing most of the crimes, most of the violent crimes, most of the murders out there, not law-abiding citizens. I just want to put a reminder out in the dome tonight that on January 9th, we all stood in this dome we raised our hand and we took an oath of office to uphold not only the United States Constitution, but the Constitution of Washington State. My friends and my family are responsible gun owners. My son took his first gun class when he was nine years old. It was a hunter safety course. And a lot of young boys and girls do that because they enjoy shooting with their family, uh, hunting ducks or geese or maybe deer or elk. And I think I told you earlier that he's on a shooting sports team. He's very accomplished. He shoots 200 to 300 rounds every time he has a practice. He's 16 years old. He would be a able to buy his first shotgun on his own when he was 18. And I frankly find it kind of interesting that a boy like my son, who is a better marksman than probably, I would gauge pretty much anyone in the room, except for maybe the good representative in the back who teaches courses. And now we're going to have to pay for him to go take an additional class when he is incredibly accomplished. I just wanted to talk about uh, the group of folks that are likely to be most impacted by this bill. It's not gonna be Skyler who can take off uh, time from work during interim as a state legislator or afford to pay the potentially $200 uh, cost of participating in a training program. It's gonna be the individual who is low income, who works long hours, um, has two jobs, can't afford to pay hundreds of dollars for training costs associated with uh, the permitting process. So we've heard about the constitutionality, um, obviously concerned that any constitutional right, whether we agree with that particular right or not, different conversation, but definitely concerned that we're associating fees with exercising any of our constitutional rights. And unfortunately in this case, 
This is the opposite of equity. We are disproportionately impacting low-income people that are hoping to defend themselves. So asking for a no. These debates that we've sat through for many years now uh, really worry me uh, because it seems to me that when it is okay to take away uh, one of the rights that many people feel is most important to them or infringe, I, we're not taking away the right, I understand that, uh, but, but we're, we're infringing and every year it seems like we are infringing more. When that happens, it normalizes the fact that we're gonna continually dial back the rights that are most important. And it may not be the right that you feel is most important to you, but if we get used to taking away other people's rights, it's a lot easier for us to lose ours.